What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And we're going to be jumping into our Indie Comics Weekend. Now usually I have a couple of comics for you guys, but for today I only have one and then we're going to release some DC and some Marvel stuff just so we can finish catching up with everything that we got going on. But this video is going to be Noctera issue number 6. And if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything that's been going on in this amazing line. Now, this is written by the amazingly talented Scott Snyder. The art is by Tony Daniel and Tomiu Mori. Published by Image Comics, we have seen a very interesting story arc coming out of this line. Introduced to a world full of what they call shades, living in a world where you have to have constant light. Our story picking us up with Val and Amori, a brother and sister making their way through this world as more or less transporters. Driving big rigs across country to different hubs, to different locations, where humans have put up their last fortifications, their last city standing with the monsters sitting at the door. And with Val and Amori taking a job to a place called the Sanctuary, Amori needing help before he turns into one of these shades. But as they get to the Sanctuary, after he gets healed up, they learn that this place is not all that it seems. And with that being said, oh, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into issue number 6, we are picking up in the past, like every issue starts out. It starts out showing us the early days of the big PM, the days when everything went dark and the shades began to take over. And we're seeing the place called The Refuge, one of the places they had stayed at when they were younger, when everything was going sideways. Thinking this may be a safe place, this may be a great place to hide out, to be able to rebuild something. But that's not how it played out. And what we see are these shades cutting their way, ripping through every single human that is standing. Now this part of the comic is going to play a little bit later on. It's going to have some significance towards the end of the issue. But as Val remembers all of this, as she gives us her inner monologue, thinking about that day, really contemplating every aspect of what has happened since that day. Everything that has brought them to exactly where they are right now. And that's what picks us up in current day. Picking up at the sanctuary, Val is overhearing a conversation between Tiberius and Blacktop Bill. Blacktop Bill being the guy that has been hunting them down for quite some time now. Appearing to look like a shade, but he is able to operate like a human. And the conversation she is eavesdropping on is Tiberius pretty much saying that he hired Blacktop Bill. He hired Blacktop Bill to get the book from his brother Gus. And he was supposed to kill Gus and the granddaughter. And because that did not happen, because they do not know where that notebook is, they can't do it just yet. And Tiberius, he wants to use other approaches than just letting Bill in and letting him massacre them. But even with Tiberius hiring him, the, the manners that Blacktop Bill goes to, the extents of complete brutality, a completely sadistic nature. It makes Tiberius even step back and say, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, why would you go to these extents? The job is such a simple one, yet you fail to do it. But while they're having this conversation, Val sees a gun on the countertop. Going to this gun, she picks it up and she points it directly at his head, thinking that she may have the upper hand here. That she's going to dictate the situation in a matter of seconds guards are descending upon her and they have guns to her head and so with val amori and the granddaughter now in custody the granddaughter now wanting to be called piper as her more or less call sign because she sees Imori and Val more as family than anybody else in this place. But Tiberius tells them that they don't want to hurt anybody. They simply just want the notebook. Now of course they don't believe this because he killed his own brother. He killed Gus and had absolutely no issue about it. Though he didn't do it himself, Blacktop Bill is the one that essentially did it in the end. It was Tiberius who had him hired 
to have him killed. But his reasoning is he deserved it. And what we learn is he sold his brother out. His brother coming up with this grand design. Coming up with the idea of be being able to reach the light of the gods. Being able to reach a light that has unnamed amounts of applications. A possible infinite amount. And though his brother was always just in the clouds with this idea, Tiberius sold him out. Or in his opinion, he sold him up. He told people about this. He told people about the idea of being able to reach this light. And so this brought in other individuals. It brought in the corporations. The people that are powerful enough to be able to control this situation. To keep it under wraps. Because we're talking about a trillion dollar industry. And so with him bringing Gus's research to their attention. He did this as an investment. And in a way to protect this investment he created a force. And that force is Blacktop Bill and his entire gang. Tiberius is the creator of Blacktop Bill. And in return for this he got a small piece of this sun. And we learned that there are much bigger places than the sanctuary. Far bigger. And eliminating Gus was the last thing that he truly needed to be able to be invited to the big leaks. To get rid of Gus and to get a hold of Gus's notes. And so Tiberius threatening the lives of Amori and Val, Bailey aka Piper, finally gives up the information, letting him know that the book is in the cradle, in the room with the light, underneath the bed is where she hid it. And so with Tiberius going off to try to find the book, he leaves two guards behind. These two guards instructed not to let them move, not to let them go anywhere or do anything. But as soon as Tiberius is out of the room, Imori throws two of his inventions out. He throws two of what he calls sizzlers. Giant blinding flashbang grenades more or less. This temporarily blinding the guards, it gives them the opportunity to get at them, take their weapons, disarm them, and knock them the heck out. And now with them armed, they're trying to figure out their next course of action, what the best thing for them to do is. And Val, she has a plan, but she's pretty sure that Amori's not gonna like it. And as we pick up in the cradle, we have Tiberius and Blacktop Bill. Tiberius finding the book and telling Blacktop Bill that he needs to go kill all three of them. Now that he has everything he needs, there is no use for them. And if Blacktop Bill does this, Tiberius is going to give him what they call the Hepatung, the translator for this weird language that the Shades speak in. For some reason, Blacktop Bill wants it. He's been infatuated with trying to learn the language of the Shades. And so Tiberius tells him if he does this, if he goes and kills all three of them in whatever manner he chooses, then he can have the Hepatung. And as Blacktop Bill makes his way into the room, he sees the three hurtled together, looking like they are absolutely terrified. But what he doesn't know is he is walking into a trap. And as soon as he gets close enough, we see the detonations. We see the glass break and all of the shades they had in containment, they are let free. They are let free on everybody that is inside this place. But it gives them the opportunity to escape. And taking this chance, they run as fast as they can, with shades falling left and right, destroying everything in their path. And the guards have no time to check out Amori or anything else because they are so focused on trying to take out these shades, trying to protect whatever people are left inside of here. And we see the three making their way to the surface. As they open up the hatch and they make their way into the darkness, they have to move and they have to move as quickly as possible. Because shades are going to be descending upon them in a matter of no time. But as they try to make their escape, they are stopped by Tiberius. Tiberius holding them at gunpoint, telling them that they have no idea what they are doing. Imori did see some images inside of his head. So he has an idea of where he might need to go. But they have no map, they have no location. Their rig is currently offline, so they have no way of actually getting anywhere. But as he goes on this long monologue about how they're never going to make it and how they'll never be able to take on everybody that is at this facility to include an individual named Knox. But what he doesn't realize is that there is a shade directly behind him. This isn't just any shade though, this is his brother. This is Gus. And we see the, the Gus shade 
completely rip Tiberius to pieces. Now Bailey Piper looking up at her grandfather, now a shade, he says English, he says one word, and that word is run. So he may be turned into a shade, but it seems like a little bit of Gus is still inside of there. And so we see them run. They run to their rig and they hop inside. Now it is currently dead. All of the batteries are completely kaput. And with the shades chasing them down, they only have one option. Being on a decline, she puts it into neutral and we see the truck rolling down the hill. Now of course, this is only a temporary solution. Because once they reach a flat or they reach an incline, they're gonna be in some big, big trouble. But as they're making the way down this hill, with the shades on all sides of them, looking like all hope might be lost, this is where she sees a light. A small beacon of a light directly ahead of them. Unsure of what this is, unsure of who it could be, but this little light is that hope. And this light reminds her of the days. The days when, when her bandages were taken off her eyes. When she was able to see for the first time. Because when the light came back for her, it just wasn't one occasion. It was in that hospital bed. When her brother's gums were no longer turning black. Driving her rig away from all of the smudges or the shades. When she was in that refuge and she saw a hand. A hand reaching out for her. The hand belonging to Bellwether. The radio operator. Meeting as young childs. Meeting in the early ages. They have gone through all of this together. And today is 100% no exception. And this is where we see Bellwether and a bunch of other individuals light them up completely. They brought the morning light and it scares away and kills a bunch of these shades, saving Amori, Val, and Piper. Now, all of her commentary up to this point has all been her reminiscing on the past. And that includes this part. Because there is much more to the story to come. Like the terrible truth about Blacktop Bill. Or when they found Eos and when they became face to face with Nox. But this is just the beginning of that journey. Now picking up with Blacktop Bill. With almost this entire facility getting ran through. Everybody seemingly dead at this point. Blacktop Bill can get exactly what he wants. And that is the HEPA tongue. And now having the ability to be able to communicate with the shades, with the smudges, we may see Blacktop Bill working with them, possibly even becoming a ruler over them. At the very least, it looks like he may be able to communicate with them and control them. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I think this is a great closeout to this story arc. You know, the last five issues, I've been really interested in the story, but it really hasn't gone too far. The last five issues has, has been them trying to get to Sanctuary. And I was very curious what they were going to do with it next. And I really like this direction. With Amori seeing this vision, with him having some kind of idea of the location they need to go. With Tiberius divulging some information that's going to help them along the way. It's going to be a very interesting story to see them find Eos and find, find Nox. And find out what all of this is about. How all of this darkness actually started. You know, as usual, Scott Snyder absolutely knocked it out of the park with this writing. It is top notch. All of her narr narration really comes to a close, comes to an ending in this issue. You really understand why they were introducing us to the big PM, those moments in the beginning of the comic. It all makes sense at the end of this, at the end of this story arc. And then again, for the, the artwork has been top notch as well. He definitely paired himself up with some individuals that, that really make his story come to life. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.